Hello there everybody, it is me Feaser Bunny, and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So today we are building this straightforward suburban family home here in the beautiful world of Santa Coya. And yeah, this is the vanilla suburban. I've always wanted to build a house like this because um, I wanted to see what I could come up with with only using like minimal cheats and also minimal packs. I wanted to not use mods for this build, but that wasn't the case because I found out very quickly that I couldn't build without the tool mod. So, yep. Anyway, really happy with what I came up with. As you guys know, I can only really manage a couple of videos every couple of months because I am dedicating all of my time and effort on my full-time job which i do have an update about that for you guys so i recently just got offered um a management position actually which i was very happy uh to accept and yeah i finally started my new position last month and yeah i'm still adjusting a little bit because initially um, when i started working full-time i was um kind of like more in the production part um, and now I'm more um, of a junior manager, so it feels weird. Um, definitely a little bit of an adjustment, but I, you know, I'm somewhat proud of myself for um, achieving what I've done so far because, to be quite honest with you guys, um, I did go through quite um, an emotional roller coaster this past couple of years. Especially last year because, um, in case you guys didn't know, I turned 30 last year. Um, and before that, I pretty much was very unsure about what I wanted to do in my life. Um, but I decided to just, um, I guess, apply for a job. Apply for an office job because I was starting to be complacent with working freelance and even though actually freelancing um, I made more money freelancing to be quite honest but I felt like I was getting nowhere and I needed to you know change things in my life which is why I applied for that job last year and yeah I didn't really open up that much about this for you guys because I didn't really post that much last year because like I said, I was dedicating all of my time and energy on that new job, but I think it um, it helped me to be where I am today and I'm really proud of myself for taking that risk because like I said, I was very complacent and um, you know, not doing YouTube was definitely a conscious decision on my part because I do think it was getting to a point where um, creating content for YouTube was becoming self-destructive because um, I never opened up to you guys about this but there was a time when I turned down jobs just to be able to make YouTube videos and um, yeah I, I, I really should not have done that because um, it did affect um, me financially but it's fine you know um, I'm not I never really relied on YouTube for like my main source of income anyway um it was mostly like um freelance work that i had to say no to because i was uh, making youtube videos but that isn't the case now anymore thankfully i have a full-time job and um you know i'm at a point where i can say that youtube is um a lot more of a hobby than what it was before and um, because of that, I don't really care about, um, you know, how the algorithm affects my videos or, you know, what I say in my videos or how many people watch my videos because, like I said, I don't really, um, rely on it, um, from the financial standpoint. Which is why this video is actually a bit longer because, um, if I, if I was making this how I usually would have made it, this would probably be more of a 15 minute long video than, you know, something more closer to a 20 to 30 minute long video. But compressing the video to that amount of time um, actually takes a lot of time. Um, but I think now I figured out a way to minimize the editing process of my videos 
um, that I feel like I can actually um, start producing more content or at least more frequently on a regular basis. Like, it's not gonna be what it was back in like 2015 or something when I put out like seven videos a week. Um, I don't know if anybody's still here from that time period of my channel, but back then my channel schedule was like, I used to post, um, like I used to post a lot of Let's Plays as well. Um, so I think it would be like one or two videos of a Let's Play per day. Then I would do like, um, one or two videos of a live action like let's build type of build video because um i didn't do that many speed builds back then uh so i was like you know what i want to build and i'm just gonna film this in real time and post it on youtube um and then i would probably do just one speed build at the end of the week or on the weekend but that would amount to like maybe seven videos a week and i was like <laughs> I don't know where I got the energy from because um, that was the time when The Sims 4 was just starting out and I was also in college back then so I guess I sacrificed a bit of my college work just to make YouTube videos but I had a lot of fun and you know I was able to build this community I was able to build this platform by doing that and I have no regrets whatsoever um, but yeah, I want to know how you guys have been. I'm excited to see some of the familiar faces in the comments. Um, yeah, I miss uh, hearing from you guys, especially from the channel regulars. And yeah, uh, please let me know how you guys have been and what you guys have been up to this past um, couple of months. And yeah, anyway, um, haven't really talked about the house itself, I guess. So... Here we go. I always love to show kind of like the floor planning layout process because I just feel like um, it's very insightful, especially for people who struggle with that aspect of building. I often get asked this, um, like I often get asked how I plan my builds and I don't really have a good answer for it because to be honest with you guys i feel like you just get a sense of you just get a sense of it you know by practice i guess um which is which is a really weird thing to say but i guess that comes with um playing the sims since you were a literal child because i literally grew up playing this game and i guess that helped me in a way because in every job that i applied for I was always like assigned to the planning department even in my uh, previous position as part of the design team. I mostly did planning work and layout work so I don't really know how to explain it but there you go. If you guys are curious on how I do my floor plans, the best way I can explain it to you guys is just by showing it to you guys. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is just, you know, trial and error and, um, you know, thinking about the flow of the space and um, also kind of just um, making it as efficient as you can. Because if you understand how the gameplay works, you would know, you know, like, you know, um, how long it takes for a sim to get to one place to another and you kind of have an idea on how big everything is or how big to make everything and um, how far everything should be as well um, and yeah this house itself is like I said pretty straightforward as you can see um, yeah pretty bob standard layout I would say um, we do have a very nice open concept kitchen and dining area, but actually one of my favorite things about this house is the porch, which I totally skipped over because I gave you guys that life update. But yeah, I really love the porch on this house. I think it turned out looking really, really good. And I made that mostly using debug items, which is, which is awesome. I'm glad they finally unlocked that. I know it's like, um, it's been very many years but I'm glad they finally unlocked that. Also, this house is a bit unusual because it does have two living rooms. It has an upstairs kind of like 
den area in like the staircase landing because I figured out that we didn't really have space in the living room to have a TV so I can imagine a standard suburban house without a TV area so I think I took out one of the bathrooms upstairs or like I made it smaller and made room for a TV area. Sorry I'm like out of breath. This is all new to me now. It's been a hot minute since my last video. I think it's been a couple of months. I'm recording this start of April so it's been like three or four months since my last recording. I believe my last video was an apartment build showcasing all of the new stuff from what was it again? For Rent? Which I actually really, really love the apartment system in The Sims 4. Now that we have For Rent, like... I would happily say that it's probably the best in the franchise, to be completely honest with you guys. And I don't know why, but I cannot stop using that unlockable sofa from base game. Like, it's hands down the best comfy looking sofa, because it's like not really like super crazily designed if you guys got what i mean um it's just you know kind of like a neutral sofa that works for any style it can work for a modern home or a traditional home i did use that massage chair from spot a refresh but yeah i took it out because that was the only item i used from spot a so i was like yeah I'm, i'd rather have less pack requirements. Um, this build does use the new um, Crystal Creations stuff pack, which surprised me that it's a stuff pack because I thought it was a kit, but I'm pleasantly surprised actually by the items that came with that pack. I think they look really good, especially the traditional item. I haven't dabbled into the whole Crystal... I haven't dabbled into the whole Crystal Creations aspect though, but I'm really really loving the items that came with the pack so far. And yeah, this is the dining area. I wouldn't normally go for those chairs, but in a weird way, I feel like they actually work. <laughs> they kind of like that weird suburban, modern, traditional way. Really like how they look. And there is a kitchen that's already built right now. Don't worry, we're going to change that because I wasn't satisfied with how it looked. I think it was looking a bit hospital to me oh and i also use those um bifold doors as my good friend harry would say from desert lux kit which to be honest i would get that pack just for these doors because they're just so good um but yeah weirdly enough i also really like these base game traditional looking counters because they just give off like you know old school suburban vibes very comfort level kind of vibes you would see a lot of these in like i don't know sitcoms from like maybe the early 2000s 1990s ah <sighs> i have such nostalgia now that i'm 30 i can finally say that but yeah um one thing that i totally forgot to mention was the fact that my channel also turned 10 years old last year i am surprised i didn't make as much of a big deal of it as I should have because being 10 years on YouTube is such a big deal but I just really did not have the time last year um because yeah for the first six months of my full-time job I was mainly focused on having a good evaluation which I actually got I got a recommendation from my boss and um fast forward a couple months later I got offered a management position. Well, it's not a management position, it's a junior um, management position for a potential kind of like project management in the future, which is not really anything that I expected because I thought I was going to be more on the design team, but okay, it's out of my comfort zone, but it's a, uh, it's a positive change in my life. Um, and I'm... Glad to see that I'm finally getting somewhere because I did um, devote a lot of my time and energy on this full-time job. So yeah, anyway, you guys just saw me furnish the garage. Nothing too crazy. I thought about putting some wine racks over there, but I don't know. I just didn't feel like they fit. So I just 
throw in some um, maintenance equipment actually from for rent. I don't know actually how the gameplay for those works, but hopefully they make living in this house a bit better, I guess, or something. And yeah, this is the upstairs den area. I'm gonna change that stereo because it just f looked really weird. Um, yeah, and I also used a lot of items from werewolves in this bag. It's weird because I'm starting to feel like werewolves is one of my favorite like game packs just because of the amount of items in that pack that I usually use. Um, I think it has one of the best trees for kind of like North American style builds, which is definitely what this build is um, going for. And also I love the cast assets that came with werewolves. I don't know why, I just really really love them. I'm really into punk music and I guess um, that's kind of how I dress, you know? I, I like the flannel. You know, quarter sleeve shirts, that's what I wear to work basically on a daily basis. So, um, really love all of those items from werewolves. And this is the master bedroom. And it's funny because I've recently been watching a lot of videos from like this YouTube channel called classicist.org. Um, yeah, and that window in the master bedroom is apparently called a palladian window um so yeah i'm glad i finally discovered a name for that um it's also called a seriliana as well which is quite cool um apparently the renaissance developed that and it was popularized by andrea palladio um which is why it's known as the palladian window even though i think uh Another person called Serilio um, came up with the design. But anyway, I'm really happy with the bedroom actually. Initially, I struggled with the very long bathroom and walk-in closet. Um, but I somehow figured it out. Um, it's a bit longer than I would usually make it, but I think it looks fine. It actually reminds me of a friend's bedroom. I don't know why I'm bringing that up, but... No, it's not a not bedroom. Uh, friend's bathroom. Hmm. Okay, not paying attention, of course. But yeah, um, just wanted to fill out that space in the corner. So I guess I used that corner piece from, I believe that came with Seasons. And I like the look of those counters that came with For Rent. I think they work really well for bathrooms actually. And at this point, I've already furnished the um, gym area which is supposed to be the other bedroom, but you can easily throw in a bed in there or something and move the gym equipment in the basement if you want to. But for this other bedroom, I thought about making a teen bedroom, but I wanted to make it a bit different because I usually would go for kind of like a weeb bedroom because, you know, I'd like to think of myself as a weeb or an otaku actually. Uh, this is just me looking at all the packs that I use because I wasn't sure if I wanted to commit to adding another pack to the ones that I already used because I really wanted to add uh, an aquarium. So I decided to just add an aquarium because I thought that would make this bedroom a little bit more interesting because I don't think I've done that before. Uh, but I decided to make the person living here um, be really into like animals. So, you know, they have a fish tank and they also have a pet frog. I think it'd be really cool actually to have like pet reptiles or something because that's also pretty common as well, right? Um, so, okay, just put a pet frog in there and a computer and kind of like a dingy looking bed. I don't know why, but I really love that bed. It looks like the kind of bed you would see in all of the sitcoms as well. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, I don't I don't think I've ever talked about this that much, but growing up I was such an animal lover, but I hate slimy animals, so I'm not a huge fan of like amphibians and fish like touching them specifically. I actually don't think I've thought about this that much, but I might have a phobia of like slimy things because I'm like deathly afraid of like touching frogs and touching fish. But growing up, 
um, I grew up in the countryside, you know, I spent most of my childhood up until I started college in the countryside, you know, the backyard of my house was a literal rice field. Um, and I remember as a child waking up and seeing kind of like the farmers plow the fields with their water buffaloes. I would never forget that feeling. Um, that field doesn't exist now because we can't have nice stuff anymore. Uh, yeah, they turned it into like buildings and stuff, which is kind of sad, but you know, that's just how things work. But yeah, I just um, added a green light to that bedroom because I feel like it worked, you know, with the whole kind of like reptile theme, if you guys got what I mean. But yeah, it's, it's fun having to reminisce about my childhood and also the past couple of years as well because this whole process kind of started around the end of 2022 because I think that's when I started to have a crisis of what I was gonna do um, when I turned 30 and I, I don't know why I just felt like I wasn't where I wanted to be um, when I turned 30 so I was like you know what I'm gonna apply um, for a job position and surprisingly I got the job offer on my very first job interview or like the the first place that I interviewed for um, offered me a very good um, job position as a as a designer which is a pretty coveted thing actually when I got there um, you know I got to talk to other architects that applied for the design position and uh, they were like, yeah, I actually applied to be a designer and I didn't get it. And I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. But in the back of my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, you were like my competition. I should have known. I mean, I got the job anyway, so I guess it's all good. But but yeah, I am really proud of myself for taking that leap of faith, even though, um, like I said, um, doing freelance work, um, I made more money doing freelance work, but you know, it's fine. Um, the upside to having a full-time job is the fact that you do have job security, you know, you don't have to constantly stress about looking for clients, looking at, you know, like job postings because, yeah, there's sometimes when you only have work for a couple of weeks and, you know, you go by um, uh, prolonged periods of time when you don't have any work and Thankfully, that's not the case for me now. Um, you know, nothing wrong if, you know, that's your workflow. That's totally fine. I have a lot of respect for freelancers. Um, but I remember sleepless nights about um, a couple of years ago uh, about, you know, the whole job uncertainty thing. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. Sorry if I'm um, stressing you guys out by telling you that. But yeah, it looks like that is going to be it for this video. Way to end on a positive note. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and also enjoyed reminiscing with me. And yeah, I would like to say thank you to all of you guys, especially to you guys who made it this far into the video. And yeah, hopefully you guys watch out for my next one because I've already started it and I've I'm really, really excited for you guys to see it as well. So yeah, like I said, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.